yeah, sewing to, sewing doubt amongst the crew is bad. Yeah, but uh, hi everybody, <laughs> welcome to uh, hey. session four of uh, Star Trek October, a Star Trek Star Trek Adventures actual play. Uh, if you're just tuning in or you're new, uh, we are set in the year twenty four fourteen aboard a uh, specialized starbase that's in the far reaches of the Sabine Expanse. Now. You shouldn't need to watch the past VODs to enjoy this episode, but you can find the VODs uh, on my YouTube and most of the popular podcast solutions like iTunes and Spotify. Uh, in terms of announcements, I just have a few this week. Uh, the first is actually really simple. Uh, today is Star Trek Day, which means that uh, literally 50 year 54 years ago, the very first Star Trek episode aired. So it's kind of cool that uh, we sort of fell on this day by happenstance. Uh, the other announcement is sort of a, more of a reminder that I'm doing the Extra Life campaign that goes from now into November. And uh, for the month of September, I'm donating 25% of my bits and subs to the cause in addition to whatever you people out there donate. And if you're interested in that sort of thing, uh, there should be links below the stream. But as usual, let's just go around and have everyone introduce themselves, starting with Dag. You are mute. Hey everybody, I'm I'm Mr. Mute. That's it. I'm <laughs> always on mute all the time. You can count on me to not say anything. Uh, I'm Dag. I am your Zaldin Captain Kijwick, and uh, we're gonna have a good time tonight. You can find me on Trek Nexus if you want to know the juicy bits of what happens behind the scenes here. Uh, John here uh, in Seattle. I play uh, Jaro Torrell. Um, who is uh, just the hotshot pilot on Deep Space October. And uh, look forward to gaming with you guys today. Hello, everyone. I'm Matthew. I play Lieutenant Jana, the Cation Chief Engineer of Starbase October. Hey, guys. I'm Aaron. I play Dr. Keeve Dottig, the Tellerite Chief Medical Officer. Um, also play the Human Ops Officer, Lieutenant Dorset. I'm Watney. I play the empathic Lieutenant Commander Stetko, the Chief of Security on October. And I'm ELH, your Game Master, or also known as Q to these people I terrorize on a daily basis. But yeah, let's go ahead and run the introduction. And welcome back, everybody. Um, exciting news. Uh, we have the very first hype train on the channel going. So that's that's real exciting. Thank you guys so much for the support. Uh, it means a lot. Hey, hype we're already level leveled up. Too. Sweet. Well, uh, keep doing you, chat. You guys are awesome. But yeah, uh, something I like doing for uh, all my streams is I like having the players do an opening monologue. And Dottig, I think you've got it this week. I do. Chief Medical Officer's log, start date 91704.3. My ongoing inquest into the relationship between the adverse alterations to the psilocybin levels among the station's residents and immunization compound 23C is ongoing. I have initiated a virologic analysis cross-reference with the Starfleet Medical Database to determine if a second pathogen was involved. So far, my findings are inconclusive. Perhaps some unknown radiation type driven in by the neutronic storm caused an unexpected reaction. 
Perhaps something otherwise innocuous that those shields could not protect us from. I'd ask a science officer if there were any on this bucket who were competent. I suppose I'll have to do it myself. Well, we're on the subject of doing somebody else's job. My investigation into how two thieves made it onto DSO with enough biomimetic gel to service a whole sector is likewise continuing. I'd ask Stetko, but our chief of security is too busy. After all, being latched onto the captain's backside like an Aldebaran mud leech is very time consuming. So far, the trail begins at DSD and I'm unable to track them prior to their ar arrival. I'll keep digging. Such a huge quantity of biomimetic gel can't be that hard to track. Somebody knows something. And while we're on that subject, I'm not terribly enthusiastic about having to surrender said gel either, if I'm being honest. I could do so much with that amount, but I suppose I'll have to stick to the amount that I was allotted. That gel came from somewhere, and maybe this uh, Commodore Archuleta knows where. I'll have to find out, I suppose. She'd better hope for her sake she has some answers for me, because without my sign up, that gel is going precisely nowhere. I don't care how many pips she has or what kind of authority she thinks she has over the medical division on this station. And if she has a problem with me, she can feel free to take it up with the Starfleet Surgeon General's office. End log. All right. Um, thanks for that. Also, thank you to Lily42 for subscribing and then doing a gift bomb. That's that's really awesome, actually. I'm kind of flustered. Um, okay, <laughs> let me let me take a moment here. Um, okay. Breathe, ELH, uh, breathe. No, no, I will I will not breathe, damn it. I will thank you guys so much. It really means a lot. Uh where was it going? This yes, first scene. We have scenes in this game, scenes that have players in them, so. We're going to go to actually, we're going to go to Med Bay because I think we want to carry on that energy from the log. And in Med Bay, uh, as I fix up a few tokens here, uh, in Med Bay, there is obviously the doctor, but also a certain Cation who uh, may have been putting off a physical for quite a long period of time. So why don't we start there for today? All right, you see. Uh... Jana sort of poke his head into the med bay, look around, sigh, and then slowly, as if he's being led away to his own execution, walks down the corridors looking for Dr. Dottig. Uh, 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 hello, uh, doctor. You, uh, you, you wanted to see me, right? Jana, what do you want? Well, I, I thought you wanted something, but I mean, if, if you don't, I can always just leave. I mean, I don't, didn't mean to bother you. By all means, please leave. I love trying to chase down members of the senior staff who won't submit for their annual physicals. This is the highlight of my day. That was sarcasm. Yeah, well, I, I kind of got that. I mean, if you want me to leave and come back at some time, I mean, I can always just... Come in, sit down. Okay. Um... And he will enter in and hop up on the bio bed. Let me just get one of these medical tricorders. You know, I've been meaning to talk to you about these. Uh, the last time I tried to use one in uh, an emergency situation, it uh, exploded. Uh, uh, would you like me to take a look at that one right now? If just Are... it seems to be working fine. Ignore the high pitch whine. They all will do that. Okay. Um... It's, I, but by the way, I, I, I'm sorry about, you know, not coming in for the physical. It's just between the how and all the retrofits that have to be done to that old bird and this, everything falling apart on the station should have had months more construction time. I just I, I haven't really been able to find my way here. Uh, if you'd like, I can paint arrows on the floor for you the next time. Well, uh, oh, I, yes, I, I see. Uh, that's very literal of you. Uh, what I meant to say was I haven't been able to find the time to come here because I have a job to do, you know? Well, you know, as it happens, so do I. And do you know what one of the aspects of that job is? Ensuring the health of the crew and residents of this station. It is a duty that I take very solemnly. It is a sacred trust. 
And I don't appreciate when certain officers duck me, to use a human euphemism. Look, Doc, it, it's not about ducking you. Also, if, if all that was really true, you probably would have you know, held onto that biomedic gel a little bit better. But, uh, you know, <clears throat> that, I guess that's neither here nor there. <laughs> yes, I suppose you're right. Uh, okay. Did you know that uh, you have acute chronic dyspepsia? What? Heartburn. Oh, that. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, about that. Um, that that's probably due to the well, to all the raw meat. I've been I've been indulging a little bit. They have this really great uh, targ tartar with uh, uh, what is it? Those it's this fusion cuisine uh, taspar eggs, targ tartar with taspar eggs. It is that that is just wow. Yes, I think they call it uh, tas targ tartar. That's it. Yes, brilliant stuff. No, I've uh, had that myself. Actually, very very good. Um, I had to limit myself um, afterwards because I have been also hitting the jump just sticks pretty hard. Uh, don't you find them too sweet? Um, well, uh, you see, not after I put them in uh, you know, medical grade solvent for about 30 seconds. And after that, they become uh, really rather tart. It's quite nice. You should try it sometime. I'll, uh, I'll do some for you. You don't mind the taste of Bactine, do you? You know, I, I don't think I know what that tastes like. So, no. Well, you are in for a treat. Okay. You know, that, that uh, that's not entirely healthy for you. I mean, do you have like an exercise regime or something? Because I make use of the holodeck all the time. There's this great rock climbing program. I'd show it to you if you want. Where would I climb rocks? We have uh, shuttles and transporters and gravity boots. You can just... Sort of easier ways to get up a hill is what I'm saying. If you... Well, yeah, but I mean, what happens if you don't have a shuttlecraft or transporters? I mean, you walk to work every day instead of taking the transporter. Why do you do that? It's, uh, it's, uh, and Date is visibly trying to search for some kind of a justification. He just says, it's a it's an ancient earth medical tradition. Doctor has always walked to work. Oh, um, well, I, I, didn't, I didn't realize. Um, do you, do you have some kind of like manual? I mean, that that maybe I'm messing something up here. Are we engineers supposed to transport to work or something? Uh, that's, you know, you'd have to take that up with the Starfleet Corps of Engineers. I really don't know. I don't know uh, a hydro spanner from a deuterium storage tank. You know what, Doc? Uh, if you don't know that, then maybe you should stop by engineering for some remedial courses. I'd be happy to walk you through a few things because, uh, I don't know, you could easily rupture a deuterium storage tank and kill us all if you don't know the difference. Did you just suggest to me that I take a remedial course? Uh, uh, no, Professor. I, 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 Mr. I mean, um, let's see, Mr. C double minus D double plus in uh, basic first aid, I believe. Well, you know, I, I the, the human body is really complex, not like a warp engine. You know? uh, 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 uh. Humanoid body. Not all bodies are human, as you well know. Yes. The, um, a, 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 a notable difference, of course, would be the um, your pheromone gland. Yeah, we don't really talk about those very much. That's, well, it's a little kind of swollen. Fun. Oh, okay. Um, is that the worst Sorry, thing? Sorry, my camera messed up. <laughs> uh, I, I, as it happens, yes. Um, there's a little swelling on your pheromone gland. Are you getting enough? Um, he just sort of looks around, pokes his head at the drone, just comes over and says, are you getting enough um, you know, recreation? If you... Uh, you, I'm your doctor. Everything you say to me is held in the strictest confidence, I assure you. And you just hear from the background, Nurse Chan shout, Oh, I'll stop listening then. Yes, thank, thank you. you, Nurse, please. She's also completely trustworthy. And also, I mean, isn't she like one of the 8472? They've got like, what, 10? They prefer uh, 
to Indeed. be referred to as well groundskeeper. There's a distinction between the. Okay, fine. Sorry. That, also, that was we have five. Easy. In case you were wondering, we we we've, we've got five. Oh, uh, so I, I'm sorry. That I must have been misinformed. I I I apologize. I didn't mean to be like culturally insensitive. That was. Doc, can I go now, please? You can go. I expect you back here within one week. And if we don't uh, see some change in the swelling on that gland, well, we're going to have to do something about it, and you're not going to like it. Okay. I'll just... So bear okay. that in mind when planning your recreation, please. Oh, I love I, it. I, I need an adult. Yeah. I, I am an adult. You're dismissed, <laughs> Lieutenant. Okay. Also, just for fun, uh, Jaro has come into the sick bay and has already left, leaving a note on Dateg's uh, monitor saying, hey, I was here. You weren't here. Be back next time. Nice. I also messed up the cameras. Yeah, so uh, let's do the, the camera thing real quick as I say a few things to stream. Um, thank you guys so much for the, the level five hype train. That, that again, first one on the channel. So super hyped that that happened. And yeah, uh, thank, thank you, Thok, for the 10 gifted too. Want to give a special shout out there. And of course, everyone who did bits. Thank you all so much. It means a lot. But yeah, uh, now that we have the webcams fixed, uh, let's go ahead and actually shift to the command deck ready room where two very important characters are having a meeting uh specifically we of course have captain kishwick but we also see a uh, commodore archuleta which you may recognize from the fenrir time hopefully i got her right token i couldn't remember which was the one i was supposed to use so hopefully it's right. the right one mm -hmm. but yeah uh, i'm gonna let kishwick and archuleta go at it for a little bit uh, she sits in her seat, tucks her, tucks her uniform a little bit. And it's like Ibsen. Hello. It's a pleasure, Commodore. Likewise, how are you finding your new posting? Quite nice, with the exception of the spiders. Uh, hook spiders. Yes. They've been here since the station's construction, and we've had security dwindling their numbers ever since. Well, you know, this is a brand new station. It's a Plenty shame. Of bugs to work out. Well, it's a shame that he had a problem like that so soon. Sounds like something that would happen on Deep Space Nine. I heard they had a vole infestation for quite some time. Hmm. You're here to pick up the BMG? Uh, uh, yeah, I'm here to fix your, fix your problems. BMG is the only problem we have, unless there's something on your radar that should be on mine. Well, in this report, you said this isn't all of the gel. Report goes on to say that I let a changeling go with a barrel of the biomimetic gel, too. In exchange for what, exactly? In exchange for securing the station, as I believed the excess was going to be used as a bomb to blow up the station. We had over 1,100 liters of biomimetic gel. That's more gel than I have ever seen in my career in one place at one time. And you let it smuggle, be smuggled onto your station. If that is what the reward, the report indicates, then that may be what happened. It was a security lapse. Mm. So now in the Sabine Expanse, which I patrol, we have a changeling on the loose with a full barrel, a hundred liters of biomimetic gel, and I'm sure very, very good intentions. I am sure that your 
more than equipped to handle that situation. Well, I will assume the remainder of the gel onto the Fenrir and uh, it will be transported to maximum security at Daystrom. That is what I would hope would happen. Have you had a chance to familiarize yourself with DSO's promenade? Not quite yet. I need to ensure that the uh, payload is delivered safely and without interference. Please feel free to make use of my entire security force at your disposal. I have my own security. I understand that you would be leery of mine. Well, yeah, since they, you know, let this happen in the first place. We did catch two members of the hand. No one else has done that before. Hmm. I see that. That's excellent news. Seems their activity is ramping up lately. Hopefully they can be taken down as well. Well, I'm sure you'll report any more activity that you see and hear of to me, right? Without delay. Excellent. Will that be all, Commodore? Yes, for now. And he'll rise from his desk respectfully. And she'll stand up as well. Until <laughs> next time. Um, she'll kind of nod and then take the pad that she had with her and head towards the door. Awesome. So John, I'll leave it up to you whether or not Terrell is on the other side waiting patiently or not. But uh, yeah, Archuleta, you make for the door. Yeah, Terrell's, Terrell's waiting there and he's, uh, oh, hey, uh, yep, um, later. And he, uh, he like scoots by her, uh, doesn't even really let her fully exit the door as he so... <laughs> just squeezes past. Uh, she will be brushed up against and she'll like be pushed and then she'll make eye contact with Ibsen again like <laughs> <laughs> and then she'll kind of straighten her her uniform once again and start to leave alrighty who's, who's the brass that's Commodore Archuleta that's my oh. boss <laughs> cool um he takes he takes a seat. So um, I'm just going to interrupt you and say, the next time you encounter somebody with brass around their brass, just stop and smile and wait for them to pass. Is that okay? Uh, yes, sir. All right. So what's up? Um, there's a race going on. I don't know if you heard about it. Did you enlighten me? Well, there's a race. Uh, Jonna was going to help me out, but he's all concerned about some sort of swollen gland. Um, so kind of hoping, you know, um, well, you know, I heard you were pretty good. Um, maybe you could be my second in the Valkyrie. Wait, you're entering the race? Don't you have duties on DSO? Uh, you, you know, took care of that. I've already gotten a double shift off. You know, arranged with others to fill my spots. Um, sure, you'll get a message about it any time now. And he's got his hands like under the table, messaging him, uh, asking for the time off. Um, and <laughs> you know, um, I just thought it'd be good for you know station morale. You know, it actually might be fun. See? When is this race? Four hours. Oh, 0400 tomorrow? Uh, well, you know, four hours from now, not 0400. That's so. exquisitely short notice. 
Well, you tell me, uh, you know, something about Jonna's sweat glands or some, I think, actually, I think he said sex glands. I didn't want to get into it, so I just let him go. I don't even want to think about that. Yeah, yep. Let me check in with Commander Hatea and make sure that my calendar can be cleared. How long is this race anticipated to last? It takes as long as it will take from us to get from the beginning to the end. Because the race will be over once we crop. Never mind. I believe that is what you call a tautology. Yeah. All right. Topography. Air- I get it. Which airlock is your ship going to be at? Wouldn't I? 16. All right. I'll meet you at airlock 16 in 330. All right. Uh, yep. Later. <laughs> he'll, uh, he'll exit. Just bail for the door. Gotcha. So you wanted to talk to Hatea, I think, yeah? Yeah. So Kiswick to Hatea. And after a moment, she replies, uh, yes, this is uh, Commander Hatea. How may I help you, sir? Do you have any security drills scheduled for today on the ship? Uh, on the house, sir? No, not that we know of. Uh, we could schedule one, though, if you wanted. Um, no, that's okay. Uh, if you could come to ops and run things, I am going to be on a guidance mission uh, with Lieutenant Terrell. Interesting, sir. Do you know how long you'll be away? Apparently, I will be away as long as I am away. One of those. Got it, sir. Uh, I will head there right after this meeting with Stetko, unless you think this is more important. Take your time. I have to be, I will be meeting up with Lieutenant Terrell uh, at, uh, in three hours and 30 minutes. Roger that, sir. Kijwick out. All right. And uh, just to sort of give uh, Watney a little bit to prepare, I thought we'd talk about the race just a little bit, um, simply because I think it's better to say this up front rather than, you know, go through everything kind of like, let, let's, let's do a shotgun approach, if that makes any sense. So the race itself, and th- this is all information you all would have in character by the time the race starts. The race itself is going to be, to be between five different individual ships. Um, obviously for you guys, the players, uh, you guys are focused on one of the Valkyries, the quote unquote Mark three fighter craft. It's the fastest vessels you guys have seats. Two people should be a good entry. Then you have a Andorian team of four above the Shashiras, uh, an Andorian sort of fighter craft slash cargo shuttle that they've repurposed. Um, then you have the Cation entry, the Kasara. Um, There's two Cations there. Should be a good match there. But the quote-unquote favorite to win, at least, you know, in terms of odds, uh, is the Aces High vehicle. Now, nobody really knows who pilots Aces High. But what everybody knows is that whoever does pilot it has taken a worker bee, like, you know, like a one-seater worker bee you'd use to drag around things in space, like panels, little bits of cargo... They have essentially tapped a warp engine to the back of a worker bee and fly around in that thing. And then, of course, last but not least, we have the where is the bathroom in Klingon freighter that um, probably is just in it so they have an excuse to drink. But uh, that's the information that's going to go sort of through Scuttlebutt. And with that, we're going to go to the scene with Watney uh, talking a little bit about that uh, security procedure that uh, certain Archuleta referenced earlier. Um, what procedure? <laughs> well, I mean, you know, the whole lecture you had prepared. Sorry. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> um, okay. So where are we sitting here? All right. So this is, I guess, the, the security conference room. Yeah, I should of. probably describe that. Sorry, I'm still a little bit getting over the whole hype train earlier. Oh, so the uh, the room itself is a fairly standard sort of meeting room. Um, you have about six tables in there. Uh, all of it is packed with your security personnel, but of import to you, uh, you, of course, have Lieutenant Jenkins there. You have Conra <laughs> there. You also have Atea, who's just observing in the back. Um, but this place is packed. Like, you're having to sort of stand up where 
um, the hollow panel on the wall is to give your presentation okay. slash speech. Okay. Um, so our zoo is, um, she's got her arms crossed and just kind of looking at the, the report on the large screen. She's like, so the last few weeks we've had a lot happen. We've had activity from the hand on station. Still don't know exactly if that's been resolved. Would love to hear reports on that. Um, multiple unaccounted for changelings as well. Uh, we were promised by the changeling that escaped that the other two would leave the station, but I wouldn't put it past them to hang around. Um, additionally, almost uh, a thousand liters of biomimetic gel was smuggled on board. Um, we need to check our, our security checkpoints and make sure that we are doubling down on any imports onto the station. And um, not the least of which a part of this supply was stolen from our state-of-the-art medical facility. Um, oh, and a side report here says that uh, the Armory's biometric scans are logging species attributes for each officer incorrectly. Apparently the computer thinks we're a department full of Gorn great that's an engineering problem i think that would make for a very effective security force well jenkins i think you're halfway there i will take this as compliment rather than insult please do please do hmm. you see that jenkins leans back against the wall that he's standing against and he reaches over his shoulder and scratches at something on his neck goes back to listening. Uh, Lieutenant, do you need to go to sickbay? No, uh, it's just itch. Why do you ask? I don't know. I just didn't look like a regular itch to me for some reason. <laughs> ah, Noah Jenkins, it's probably because he ran into something again, says Conra. I am not clumsy if this is what you imply. Station is merely very small, very small Ooh. hallways. Again, uh, I think this is somewhat of a personal problem, especially because, um, well, let's be frank, you've had your arm reattached six times? Seven? It gets stronger every time it is taken off. It... This is how it works, yes? Yeah, even Conrad's like, I, I, uh, I don't know. Of course, it is it, the pain. It, it causes strength in body. This is how pain works. It is it is indication of growth. When you are when you are in gym, and you tear your muscle, it it hurts. The pain is indication of growth. I don't quite think it works that way. When you are when you are a teenager, and you feel pain in legs because you are growing large, you are going strong, right? You grow tall. It's so what you're saying strength. is 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 the heartache I feel for my long departed wife you're saying that makes me stronger and like conra is giving you like the biggest shit eating grin like he's got you in a hole kind of a thing of course this is this is pain it lets you know that love was real and then your heart becomes inured against pain so you no longer feel anything this well, is strength i shall uh i'll tell my current wife about it i'm sure she'll get a kick out of it your problem is that you are married. This is also weakness. Now listen here. Marriage, and Hatea speaks up and says, all right, gentlemen, this is not your time to bicker. Sorry, Stetko, you were saying. Uh, yes. Thank you, Commander. Um, Commander, what? how could the the gel have gotten past our, uh, our security checks? I mean, this is a state-of-the-art facility. Was there some kind of shielding that was going on? I know it's a big station, but I would think something of this quantity we would be able to detect. Well, and Hatea sort of stands up and uh, walks over to you, because uh, that's kind of why she's here, is she's here to give you sort of the command level, what's happened so far. Mm -hmm. um, she's not just here to listen in and be that bad teacher in the back kind of a thing. <laughs> um, but she sort of walks up to the front and, uh, you know, uh, motions at the hollow uh, 
display. God, I really can't think today. Motion's at the hollow display. And uh, what you see on the screen is actually a small number of what look like Jumja sticks, like, you know, the food. And uh, she points at it and says, my understanding is that they hid the biomimetic gel in things like this, in ordinary commodities. And then once it was on the station, they gathered it, reprocessed out the gel, and then put it into those barrels. Okay, so what you're saying is the whole station could be biomimetic gel at this point. <laughs> well, I would hope not. I mean, I just got off the horn with the captain and he didn't sound thrilled, though I guess that is kind of what the captain does. You know what I mean. Right. We need to track uh, the vendors that the items we know of came from, cross-reference any shipments in. That might help. Well, I'm sure with your fine security team here, she says, without... No sarcasm in her voice. Let's be clear. No sarcasm. She actually means it. I'm sure your fine security team here will be able to f uh, function and find our problem uh, distributors. Yeah, I'll make sure of it personally. See that you do, because, um, again, Kishwick did not sound pleased. Right. And as, as Stetko's maybe freaking out a little bit. Uh, we are actually going to cut to airlock. What did you say? Airlock 16. And uh, waiting for you is uh, the Valkyrie fighter. So to talk a little bit about the Valkyrie fighter, uh, as I put us just on the uh, shuttle interior map for the time being. So the uh, Valkyrie fighter, uh, let me put it on the screen so stream can see what's going on here. So the Valkyrie fighter is actually kind of like a stealth fighter in a way um it has inlaid warp nacelles into the back it has wings that can accommodate everything from phaser banks to literal payloads like you would drop on things um and it's got sort of a sleek tapered front um that can just barely squeeze two people into it um but uh already there is terrell when you arrive captain and uh terrell tell me would uh would terrell have gotten into say any uh wardrobe changes for the race uh, so Terrell is, uh, is currently just, you know, wearing casual clothes. Um, the Valkyrie in question has been, uh, uh, painted up to look like, uh, like a shark swimming through space. <clears throat> and, uh, he's inside just making sure everything is perfectly polished. Everything is there. Um, you know, and he's, yeah, he's. He looks like he's taking things quite seriously right now. You are muted, Dag, as is tradition. Stupid mute button. Uh, Kishwick will come in in uniform, stoic as ever. Still has Archuleta's tear down on his mind. In a somewhat, um, it, it seems genuine. <laughs> Uh, Terrell will stand at attention, uh, captain on deck. <laughs> As you were, man. <laughs> then he uh, uh, takes a seat. I hear, uh, I hear your quarters aren't as Spartan as this. Uh, they are now. Except there's still some bug guts on the one wall. I just, haven't gotten around, I just haven't gotten around to it. Oh, I guess John, I killed a spider in my room. I don't know. Whatever. Uh, and Kiswick will look at the co-pilot's chair and I will go ahead and begin configuring this for the layout to which I'm accustomed. Mm -hmm. I think so because I, if I, think I can interrupt find... real quick. Okay, go ahead. Um, I would say that this is actually a good point to build some momentum because you could use some. So, uh, Captain, real quick, uh, if you could roll me a control and a command, and the difficulty is only a one. And if you have anything like Starfleet Protocol, um, Starfleet uh, Configuration, anything along those lines would apply here. I do have Astro Navigation. I'll let so it happen, yeah. Configuring a craft for such. Okay, so... Da -da -da, da -da 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 -da. 
All right, one success. So unfortunately, no momentum. But yes, you are able to uh, change the configuration to your liking. And as you sort of look at the race's course, um, you see it passes by several areas of interest. Um, so the first area of interest is a Matura Nebula, a uh, purple sort of hued nebula. You don't necessarily go too far into said nebula, but you do sort of brush through it. Um, that's in leg two of the race. Uh, leg three is a, to borrow a Star Wars term, I know we're crossing the streams here. Um, it's sort of like the Kessel Run, where the closer you get to the black hole, the faster you can go. Um, and then there's the fourth leg of the race, um, which is through an area of space that is similar to the Badlands. Um, it's not quite as bad as the Badlands, which is why it's not called the Badlands. Um, I haven't really thought of a good name for it in character, but if you have one, go for it. Um, the major difference, though, is that it is purple-hued instead of the orange glow of the Badlands. So you still have plasma streamers, uh, gravimetric disturbances, things of that nature. And sorry, that's that's my interruption. You may continue. So, yeah, I was thinking that maybe... Um... Well, I don't know how you feel about flying in an EV suit, but, you know, there's always that potential to be able to reroute all life support into the engines to get a little bit more oomph. That's smart. I've never done that before. It's been oh. a long time since I've had some fun in a shuttle. Oh, you know, and uh, you may notice that, well, uh, I've installed the five-point harnesses, uh, that's so that we could potentially take off take off the, the grab plating and reroute any power from there. That's really resourceful. Well, you know, you got it. You got to use the power where you can pull it from. Just and the fact that this thing has seat belts at all is impressive. Well, you know, hey. So have you performed an Event Horizon skim around a uh, class three black hole before you know in the simulator quite a few times i'm looking forward to it i think it's gonna be a blast so do i i'm gonna try to do uh well you know i call it the cardassian corkscrew so yeah i think it'll be fun and kishbik is just like staring like where do you come up with this stuff And uh, what else do you know about that purpley area of plasma streamers and gravimetric distortions? Ah, the mediocre lands. Yeah. Um, you, know, uh, it, you know, it'll be interesting. I haven't really actually gotten out, gotten out to fly in that area yet. So, you know, I've been looking to see um, what we could potentially run into out there. And uh, I think it's going to be... I think it's going to be interesting. Uh, I, I think she can take it. He uh, kind of smacks the uh, console. I'd like to spend two threat that the panel falls off. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's that's nothing. He, uh... <laughs> Somehow, I'm just a little bit more worried than I was before. You know, mm. um, Jana would have had a lot more to worry about than you. You know, I'm going to take it easy on you. I mean, you know, don't want to give you a heart attack or anything. Oh, it's not your flying I'm worried about. The fact that, um, well, if anything goes wrong, I don't know anything about how to fix it. So it's all in your capable hands. Oh, yeah, I can, I can do that. Right. What do you know about I the competitors in this race? Um, you know, there's really everything I can think of. There's really only one person we got to worry about, and that's the one that nobody knows. So, you know, it's kind of like the Black Knight back in the day. Black Knight. Yeah, yeah. You know, Knight from out of town comes in. Nobody knows who they are. They win all the prizes, and then they just go off again. Hmm. Keswick will start recalling the entrance into the race to see what their, you know, scores and histories are. Okay. 
Uh, let's actually try for some momentum here. Go ahead and roll me a reason and a con. Uh, difficulty of zero. It's very easy to pull up this information. Also, I love that it's the mediocre lands. That's that's totally the, lay, totally the name we're going to go with from now on. The mad land is pretty good, too. The mad land? <laughs> mad hey, land. Momentum. All right, so two successes is two momentum for you. So, uh, again, I will put us back on the screen just so it's easier for me to go down the list here. So, uh, where did I put the race screen? Ah, there it is. So, uh, starting at the top, of course, we have you all. You're in the Valkyrie. Then you have the Andorians and the Shashiras. Uh, there's four of them there. Uh, they have a quote-unquote colored history, as it is, with um, smuggling, illegal arms trade. You really don't know why they're even being allowed to race and not in, like, a cell, but that's what it is. Uh, the Kassara, the two Cations there, uh, you see that they've been married happily for 50 years. Um, they're sort of like that old couple that you see in car clubs that just sort of love doing it. Um, then you have Aces High, which, again, is sort of piloted by this mysterious figure. Um, the only screenshot you're able to find about the pilot of Aces High is... Um, well, let me ask this. Have you ever seen uh, Top Gear? Do you know who the Stig is? Oh, God. <laughs> I know who the Stig is. All right. So if you know who the Stig is, and those who don't, uh, it's basically a guy that wears an entirely white jumpsuit and a white motorcycle helmet with a tinted visor, so nobody knows who the Stig is. Um, that's who's doing Aces High. And then finally, uh, I'm going to actually attempt the Klingon this time. Nuk uh, da och push for e Yes, also known as Where is the Bathroom. Uh, there's four Klingons there. They literally just sort of came onto the station about a week ago from their That's Negvar. Great. And uh, they have noted that they've taken on about five caskets of blood wine onto their shuttle. Well, seems you were right, Mr. Terrell. Mm -hmm. The Aces High will be your Black Knight. Well, you know, it's well, well, we'll, you know, we'll see what goes on. And yeah, uh, I think we're going to pivot from that scene, actually, back down to sick bay. As obviously, Jana, you've left at this point, but uh, Dottig, you do get a chirp on your communicator from Commander Hatea. This is Dottig. Go ahead, Commander. Well, uh, Mr. Dottig, or sorry, Dr. Dottig, uh, I had a question for you. Uh, would you like to oversee uh, race proceedings? What do you mean? Well, uh, as the captain is participating in the race that you may or may not have heard about, uh, I'm sort of left in charge of the station, which means someone has to take the how out. And since you are... Kind of second in command, technically. I thought I'd ask you first. I'm sorry, take the how out where? Just basically have to follow the uh, participants in the race. Just make sure they don't do anything funny like, um, well, throw each other into black holes, things like that. Hmm, that would be counterproductive. But yes, uh, yes, I believe I will. Thank you. All right. Uh, I'm also going to call up Jana and Stetko. Um, as long as they're in agreement, I expect to see the three of you on the how. Uh, I mean, there is, there is no agreement. Tell them it's an order. <laughs> well, I was going to give them the option, but when you put it like that, Doctor, that's why I like you. And uh, Hatea pauses and says, well, that's it. Hatea out. Race. Waste of time. And Dati will stroll out of the sick bay, um, despite the grousing, visibly kind of excited. Kind of excited. I'm confused what that might look on a Tellarite because they're always so, you know, unenthused, but who knows? No, I feel like uh, as he's walking, he's just he's leaning forward um, while he's walking, just indicating his... Uh, <laughs> His excitement to get to where he's going. I love it. I love it. All right. So I tried my best to get us the starting line, but we're unfortunately going to have to go to Theater of the Mind for this one. So uh, just off of the station. Oh, well, we don't have that storm anymore. Let's get rid of that. 
Uh, so just off the station where the fluidic corridor is, um, all of the participants in the race have lined up and are ready to go. And we sort of see the how sort of drift in from left side of the screen. And really, I'm going to let you guys decide. Either Date gives the opening speech or the captain does. Entirely up to you all. Dottig. All right, Dottig. If you remember that episode of Voyager, you got to give a speech and then you got to fire a photon. Well, we are all here for a race, which apparently is very exciting. Yes, in the face of uh, vast scientific discovery and opportunity for advancement of species, we instead choose with our whole hearts to go as fast as we possibly can. <laughs> to that I say, it's not what I would have chosen. But I respect the opinions of all. And let the race begin. Commander Stetko, fire photon torpedoes. Dispersal pattern Sierra, level six. All right, uh, and Stetko, because I find it funny, you're actually rolling for this one. Oh my God. <laughs> Jaro, Jaro is going to basically do a burnout. Please don't let me <laughs> pop the clutch up. and just. Yeah, no yeah, pressure here. He's going to light a little bit of plasma behind him just to leave a little bit of a. A little, burnout trail. Little, little culvert starburst there. Yeah, yeah, there you go. The starburst maneuver. So yeah, Watney, I, I need uh, Stetco to do a control and a security assisted by the How's uh, weapon security. The difficulty is a three, technically, because you are firing a photon. Okay. Um, What was it again? Uh, control security for you. <laughs> she blows up the Klingon ship. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's why we're rolling, because if she rolls a complication, <laughs> she's hitting somebody. Um, what a momentum for that. I have say Starship these... Weapon System. That would apply, yeah. Do we have any momentum? You have two. I would like to buy an extra dice. All right. Please don't let me mess this up. All right, well, you got an assist from the Ooh, how. There you hey, go. four successes. You get the momentum right back. So, Watney, tell us a little bit about, uh, what was it, uh, Dispersal Pattern Sierra? Um, yeah, so this is like her, like, go fire mm -hmm. for the race. Okay, so Sierra is, um, one torpedo, then two, and then three. Okay. So, yeah, it's sort of like a literal countdown yeah. where Terrell and Kijwick, you see the first explosion and then the second explosion and then the third explosion. Hit it. On the clutch and uh, burning a slight trail behind us. Love it. Love it. All right. So now we're going to go to the actual race map here. Um, now, to be fair to everyone, uh, I'm also going to open it up so that uh, the other players not involved in the race can have something to do. Um, basically, what we're going to do here is... Um, we're going to do what's almost an extended task. And what I mean by that is there should be a handout. In fact, I'll show it to everybody. Uh, that sort of shows how the race works. So the way it's going to work is that for each interval, and there's four intervals, you're going to be rolling either a control or a daring plus con at difficulty two to start with. Now, obviously, when you get near the black hole, when you get near the meh or mediocre lands, the difficulty is going to go up. But if you succeed on that task, you get to roll your con plus two challenge die. And the end result of everybody's score is going to determine the positioning going into the next interval. And what I would say is you can spend momentum and talents as if this was an extended task. Um, but if you fail, if you do not succeed at the roll, you drop back two positions automatically. So any questions there? No. Okay, so uh, now we go to the people involved. So we have Jana. Uh, which uh, which which ship you want to take over? Oh, um, I'll take over the nice Cation couple. That's so the wholesome. nice Cation couple. All right, let me move that into a solid macro for you. 
Uh, give me one moment here. I forgot to... Thought I had this prepared, but apparently Roll20 derped, so... Alright, so, so we'll do Cation Race, and should be visible to all players. Uh, do you see the Cation Race macro? I do, yes. Alright, cool. Uh, Watney, what do you, which one do you want to take over? Which one of the ships? Yep. Um... Am I looking at the icons over here? Yes. Okay. Uh, you can take over the Shashira. The yeah. where is the bathroom? The, so the Shashira. The Shashira? Yeah. Okay. All right. Let me copy that into its own macro. Dorian race. And give that. You should now see the Andorian race available for your bar. And then. Uh, Jana, would you like to take Ace Society or do you want the Klingons? Uh, Jana already got the. Oh, right. Sorry, Dottic. God, I'm really out of it today. I apologize. Dottic, which uh, do you want? I, I, I think you know. The Klingons, of course. Yeah. I knew it. <laughs> All right, let me grab the Klingons here. Oh, plop. <laughs> and uh, sort of to keep things interesting, uh, I do have a few rules on uh, what you guys could do here. So obviously I'm going to keep some threat to roll for aces high, but I'm going to divvy up my remaining threat among everybody else so that you have your own quote unquote momentum pool. Um, so I need everybody to actually give yourselves two momentum and your momentum will be confined to your ship. So for example, uh, Dottig, if the Klingons roll like four successes, and they would gain two momentum. You would gain two momentum, but only you, if that Got makes it. any sense. Yep. Um, right. I don't see a Klingon. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't I almost see the ship. The ships, oh, okay. where are these at? Uh, this should actually be under the macro uh, window, the uh, bulleted list in the right-hand menu. Yeah, Watney, well, I think you've got the Andorian race macro. In bar. Yes. And then you should show macro quick bar, there and then it'll it'll show that down lower oh, left. Okay, and Dory. Got it. Got it. Ooh. That's okay to test. Yeah, <laughs> this is a good time to. Uh, yeah, everybody, let's get everybody to to hit the button. All right, and then uh, don't mind the We're major list our here. <laughs> uh, we only care about aces high, so yes, everything is working. Excellent. All right. Well. Uh, let's get this race going. So yeah, for the marbles, uh, let's start at the top and work our way down. So Valkyrie team, what you doing? Uh, full, full acceleration out of a burnout. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's also going to, uh, uh, he looks over real quick just to make sure that the captain did put on his harness and he is going to turn off the grab plating and do a corkscrew acceleration as they uh, leave the starting line. I love it. I love it. So I would like you to roll me a daring in this instance, a daring con at a difficulty of two. All right. And I'm going to give you a threat so I can use my bold con. Okay. And then I'm going to use the other two momentum here. Okay. All right. So daring con submit. That'd be four dice. And... Can, I, can I assist by uh, making sure power is routed to inertial dampeners and structural integrity accordingly? You may certainly assist with, uh, let's call this a control and engineering for you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no. This is why this is why I was going to bring Jana. Mm-hmm. And I'm okay. going to re-roll the uh, complication Ooh, because of bold. Come All right. So. Would I get, uh, would I apply Astro Nav here? Yeah, you would. Well, I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you to be fair. Ah. I'm getting wow. that complication, damn it. Wow. <laughs> All right. So you keep the complication and Kijwick. I think that's what's going to happen is uh, you guys rock it out of the starting line. But what happens is you probably pull too much power and well of course we're going to see after everything's done what your positioning is but i'm going to say you lose one power on this and power is going to be important in this race so 
Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to go and... Uh, oh, no, you need to still rule challenge die. So six challenge die from Tyrell, please. And that was... Let's see. I got... How many successes there? Uh, you had four, so you should have two momentum. All right. So first, let me do this for untapped potential. Hey, okay. look at that. That's three momentum now. Mm -hmm. And we'll do the challenge dice. How many did you say? Six, please. Six. And I'll re-roll the two once. All righty. Ugh. All right, so keep in mind, your number is four. So yeah, uh, let's just go down the line here. Uh, Shashira, what you got going on? Um, <clears throat> the Shashira is just going to accelerate as quickly as possible in a single line. Nothing fancy. Got it. Wow. Wow. Okay, that is uh, six, oh. or no, that is uh, three successes for you. So, yeah, you actually get a point of momentum for the uh, Endorians, and you place at six. Very nice. Very nice. Uh, Lovecraft, tell us a little bit about uh, what the uh, Cation couple's doing. Well, they are, uh, they're just sort of like chatting amicably amongst themselves. They, uh, they have some nice tea out. They're not really taking this particularly seriously because, hey, we're just enjoying our retirement. And they're just going to set an easy, nice pace uh, out of the gate. Slow and steady wins the race, or at least has the move. I will wow. spend one momentum to buy an extra die for that. Okay. And uh, we'll see how they do. That's three successes. Mm, that seven. is three successes. So you get the momentum right back. And yeah, you place it a seven. Wow. I'm actually going to start putting people in order here just so that we don't lose it. Um, so I'm going to be anticlimactic, and I'm going to say that the Klingons roll next instead of Aces High. Okay. Um, so on the uh, bridge of the uh, Klingon freighter, the party is already well underway. Um, as a matter of fact, two open casks of blood wine flank the captain's um, command chair, and he has uh, not one but two mugs that he's continuously dunking um and draining as uh as he looks at the sensor readout sees the ace is high and says stovak ram that talk heck and uh they will attempt to ram uh the ace is high uh and knock them off course all right yeah i'll allow it go ahead and roll should be it will we'll handle it the same way as your race rolls we'll see what happens okay. All right, so I believe ramming is now a uh, difficulty three, and you didn't buy anything with momentum. Did not. So I, th I think what happens here is you sort of swerve out of your quote unquote lane, but that you, you maybe get about halfway before you swerve on back. That's fine. All right, and now let's see what the ace is high does. Uh, I have uh, one momentum or one threat, so I'm, I'm gonna spend it here. See what we can get. Doesn't get me a whole lot, but uh, hey, two successes, which means they get seven. So for starting line to interval one sort of uh, pausing line, I guess we'll call it, uh, the Kassara and Aces High are neck and neck. They are quite literally uh, competing for the pole position. Uh, right behind them is the Shashiris, followed by the Valkyrie, followed by the Where is the Bathroom? And uh, it is at this moment that those of you on the How, as we sort of shift away for a moment from the race. Uh, obviously, Dantig, you're center chair. Jana, you're over at engineering. Stetko, you're a tactical. Um, Stetko, you're seeing something odd, not just in the racers, but you're seeing something on sensors. But the thing is, is it's almost like an old depleted probe, if that makes any sense, that's sort of drifting into the racer's path. Um, John, are you picking up what I'm seeing on sensors as well? Something, some kind of old probe? Uh, yes, uh, Lieutenant. It looks like some kind of, I don't know, derelict. We should probably try to intercept it and remove it from the path of the raceway. We don't want that interfering with the affairs. Yeah. Um, so who's at the helm? 
Is it? Uh, some red shirt, but if Dottig wants to go run up there. Oh, uh, no, Dottig can't play. He's not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Helm set a course to intercept. Commander, it is inappropriate to set the course of action without consulting the commanding officer. Um, is he a commander? Yeah, he's a full commander. Okay, my bad. Um, doctor, there is some kind of probe in the way of the race. Recommend yes. we set an intercept course. That thing will like very exaggeratedly, like sort of focusing <laughs> as though he's thinking and say, very well, proceed. <laughs> All right. So as we sort of cut back to the external view, what we see is the howl actually sweeps in in front of the racers, locks on a tractor beam onto the probe and pulls it out of the way just as the racers pass the pause line. And I tell you what, we've been going for an hour. So why don't we take our 10 minute break? And when we return, we'll have more of that race. So we'll be back shortly.
All right, welcome back. Uh, if you're just tuning in, we're literally doing a uh, bit of a sporty race between uh, five different teams. And uh, let's just say the uh, favorite fan favorite, Aces High, is performing just as well as an old uh, Cation couple, followed slow, shortly by uh, an Andorian team, followed by our intrepid player group led by uh, Kijwick and Terrell. And then up in the, up in the back is... Uh, Good old boy Klingon group. But yeah, same sort of thing. You now enter into an area of space where you skirt past a Matura Nebula. And normally, um, skirting through the nebula would um, more or less require some very tricky maneuvering. So I'm going to offer a choice to everyone. Um, you can either go through the nebula, which would be shorter, 
uh, your difficulty would become a three. Um, or you can avoid the nebula, but you would lose one power. And that's sort of the difference here is either you're risking power or you're risking a higher difficulty. So which would you prefer? Uh, let's start with the player group. Oh, we're going through the nebula. We're going through it. Going through it. All right. So same roles as before. Daring or con or daring or control plus con. Um, I believe you have precision maneuvering and improved reaction control system. So your difficulty is only a one. Okay. Uh, Chura looks uh, over at the captain. He goes, you really don't know shit about engineering, do you? <laughs> Always had people do it. <sighs> All right. Uh, give you a threat, and we're going to spend my two momentum for extra dice. Okay. All right. Just try not to break anything. Wow, that is uh, four successes. Very nice. That means you're up to uh, three momentum by my count. Yeah. And then, yeah, six challenge die. Ooh. Ooh, that means I get threat. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And then six challenge dice. And we're going to reroll the three zeros. There All we right, go. so you have a grand total of eight. So you uh, barrel through the nebula, uh, relying on both uh, Terrell's experience at the helm and the natural systems of the Valkyrie fighter. And you're making extremely good time. But uh, let's see how the other teams are doing. Uh, let's start from the bottom up this time. So uh, Klingons, what are you doing in the back there? Um, yeah, the, the captain slams his fist down on the the armrest of his uh <laughs> of his command chair uh looks around at his crew with a scowl takes a huge pull of blood wine uh from his goblet says a head full through the nebula open the bassard collectors all right so yeah, uh, are you spending any uh, momentum slash threat to give them additional die? Yeah, I'm going to spend uh, one momentum to get an additional die. Alrighty. And yeah. and so to do that, do I just roll the click on macro and then roll an additional d20? Or? Uh, no, you would basically take the first entry in the threat rolls. Got it. Oof. All right, well, it appears the Klingons are going nowhere fast. So <laughs> what happens is the Klingons uh, hit the edge of the nebula, and what happens is is the Bustard Collectors do open up, but they do so too much almost, where it's too much being collected. And for lack of a better term, you literally stall right on the edge of the nebula. And then, yeah. Uh, let's do the Cation group next. Uh, anything fancy the Cations are going to do? Uh, well, the, uh, the female partner is going to turn over to the male and says, says uh, you know, that, that Mutara Nebula, doesn't that remind you of our vacation on Risa when that weather grid fell and there was that wonderful thunderstorm? It was about, uh, oh, what is it? It was 15 years ago now. Let's, let's go through the Nebula, right? What, what do you think, dear? I think that's a wonderful idea. Yes, let's. And so I am going to, because this is a crazy plan, I'm going to give you two momentum and one threat to roll four dice on that. All righty. Okay. Well, um... Oh, God. <laughs> you didn't pass either, so I think what happens is maybe the Cajuns get lost in the moment, if you know what I mean. Mm. And uh, <laughs> they're back there with the Klingons. Uh, talk to me about the Andorians. What are the Andorians doing? So the Andorians... Um... We're feeling pretty good at the start, but then they see the player group like just go directly through the nebula, and they're mm -hmm. like, well, we got to do the same thing. Okay. Are you spending any momentum? I'll spend two. Okay. Uh, so it would be two momentum and one threat just to give you the full threat there. Okay. What am I rolling? Uh, you're just hitting the macro again, and it'll handle it for you. Oh, okay. Wow. Wow. Okay. So same thing. And Dorians go into the nebula, and uh, they're they're not doing too hot either. They're I mean they're a little bit ahead of the Cations, but not by much. 
All right, and now is it is it all right, GM, if I flavor that a little bit? You may certainly flavor it. Um, the other ships are, are having difficulty because when the Klingons went in and opened the Bussard collectors, um, they were subject to some severe gravimetric shear and bits of their hull plating actually began to shear off um, and it's creating some uh, some impromptu obstructions. I love it. You may have one momentum for adding in. But yeah, uh, let's see how well Aces Highs does. Uh, you guys have given me three threats, so I'm going to use it. And as expected, he gets a total of five successes. Oh, and uh, he's going to re-roll those four zeros. Oh. oh, wow. So, you know, the Valkyrie crew, you get through the other side of the nebula and you look back and you're thinking, damn, I don't see any other ships. And then like a bat out of hell, the Aces High almost vomits its way forward. Like the, the nebula vomits the Aces High vehicle out and it goes streaking past you at blistering speed. Yeah, just give me a moment to uh, update the numbering here, and then we'll get on to leg three. And uh, all right, so Terrell looks over at Terrell looks over at the captain. He's all right. Um, I'm I'm sure we can find something useful for you to do. I think you may have misunderestimated me. So with right, that well, prepared... Like, like oh. say something inspiring. I don't know. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm going to break it to you easy. I'm here because your mom told me to watch you. <sighs> Great. <gasps> that was a joke. Jen tells me I need to joke more. Mm, yeah. Mm. <laughs> nice. Oh, Lord. Oh. And we're actually going to bounce back to the Howl at this point because the Howl has brought aboard that um, that probe. And, uh, of course, you have people for this. You don't actually do it yourself. You delegate. And, uh, Jana, what you're getting from your team is that this is a um, an old Takan probe. And if you need a reminder on who the Takan are, I certainly can. Yes, uh, that's from the introduction of the Ferengi. So the Takan had this massive interstellar empire. They were able to move solar systems through stellar transporters. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. them. Uh, Captain? Yes, Lieutenant? Uh, I don't know how, but we've stumbled across an item of great archaeological significance, I think. This is a, a Takan probe. What? Are you sure? I'm just reading off what they told me from engineering. Now, I, I mean, I trust my staff, so I'm, I'm yes, I am, I'm sure. This could be an archaeological and anthropological find of unprecedented significance. I must verify this myself. Commander Stetko, you have the bridge. Hi. And I don't yeah, have Dating's a map of the How Engineering, but it's we're fine. just going to play theater of the mind for a moment. Uh, so Dating, we'll, we'll say back here is where engineering is, because mm -hmm. of course. Uh, so you go to the engineering, and when you see the probe, uh, it looks almost like a a tapered cylinder where the center is, of course, cylindrical, but it sort of tapers into a point at each end. Um, it's made of a dark black metal um, that seems to absorb all light that looks at it. So sort of like a, um, is, I think it's Vanta black, like mm -hmm. the super, super dark in real life material like, that absorbs, what is it, like 99 point something of all light. Um it's very uncanny looking at this thing. Um, and what you see is, of course, Jana's, you know, uh, team is all sort of around it with tricorders and other sort of observing devices, hollow imagers, things like that. But when you walk in, Dantic, what happens is all of them suddenly gasp and step back because a series of glyphs of Takan language, uh, almost like a holographic fashion, sort of project from the probe itself onto the deck plate before you, Dantic. Oh. And I take it it wasn't doing this before. Uh, no, no, sir. No. Um, Dante's going to pull his tricorder and attempt to run the glyphs through the Universal Translator. All right. And I'm going to give you access to a handout 
But uh, as you get that information, we're going to go back to the race. So we return to the race. So now comes the uh, really interesting part of the race where uh, you have to decide how close you want to get to a black hole. And just so everybody knows, even though light can escape a black hole, you guys have warp engines. And in more than one novel and in more than one situation, you can technically escape a black hole with warp speed. So what I would say here is that instead of the difficulty going up, the complication range is going to go up the closer you get to the black hole. So uh, let's start with the Klingons. Let's 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 start with the Klingons. Klingons are in the back still. What what are the Klingons doing? Uh, well, let's see. The Klingons now thoroughly frustrated um, by by the uh, poor showing. Uh, the Klingon captain yells, "Divert all power to engines." Catch that worker bee. And uh, yeah, I'm going to give you two, um, two momentum and one threat. Oh. And uh, we're going to try to try to close the gap. All righty. I believe in you, Klingons. Thank you. At least that's, somebody does. <laughs> oh, I did, I, I'm sorry. Oh. I didn't believe hard enough. I'm sorry. Wow. So, even, yeah. the, even the th even the challenge dice <laughs> i know yeah. so you just get out of the nebula and you push all power into engines and then you go nowhere you literally just sit there <laughs> he's just the captain's gonna take one final swig out of his thing and say you have shamed your houses and this ship <laughs> Grethor awaits you if you don't get me moving. Oh, I love it. Uh, let's go to the Cation couple. What's what's going on with the Cations? Oh, you you remember that uh, that time we took in that sightseeing tour on Deep Space Nine? You remember the wormhole there? It's isn't that just like the the way in which the the nebula is parting for us as we're leaving? It that was just a lovely time, wasn't it? It really was, you know. And they're just going to continue on their merry way. I'm not going to give you any threat. I'm just going to roll straight. Just gonna roll straight. I love it. All right. Well, uh, good news is uh, they don't roll a comp. Oh no, they do roll a complication. So the uh, the Cations are sort of almost skirting the event horizon. And what I'm gonna say is, I need them to now make an additional roll. Otherwise, they're gonna come out of the race as they get sucked into the black hole. <laughs> Uh, that sounds like it's a lot worse than just, you know, coming out of the race as they get sucked into a black hole, but okay. Okay, so the complication is, so the, the Cation team does almost fall into the event horizon, but they divert in time. Um, but what happens is, much like the Klingons, your engines go out. So you are definitely in the back now. All right, so let's go to the player group, then the Andorian, then Ace is high. So Terrell. So Terrell looks over at the captain. All right, this is going to have to be timed perfectly. And he just like kind of hangs his head knowing what he's asking for. All right, at these coordinates, I need you to fire two torpedoes. We are going to skirt the event horizon using the shockwave of the torpedoes to help push us away from the event horizon. You good? You're muted. As a why, why wouldn't he be? Why do I have a mute button at all? That seems a lot like standard procedure when you're trying to perform this kind of maneuver. Not a problem. All right. Good, good. And then I'm going to, um, let's see. We're going to use determination for okay. something to prove. Okay. And then we're going to give you one momentum and one threat. Okay. So that I can uh, actually, yeah, yeah, that's the way we're going to do this. One momentum, one threat, so that I get to roll three dice uh, for the daring con. Mm -hmm. And then I get to re roll one of these dice. All 
All right, so that is a total of uh, five successes. Now, don't roll your challenge dice yet because we have to see if the photon torpedo plan works before I tell you how much challenge dice to roll. Okay. So as you and I'm also close... gonna I also I'm also gonna re-roll the one fail one not success. Okay. Because it's you know it's Terrell. He's going Where's risk. This? Makes sense. It's all about risk. Mm-hmm. Oh, not science con. And one die. And focus. There we go. All right. There you go. All right, so four successes means you have two momentum by my count. And then, of course, whatever you roll with your um, untapped potential. That's so, six successes. Nice. So, so yeah, that's I can four momentum. That's four momentum, yeah. Uh, so, Kijwick, uh, you see Terrell almost redlining the structural integrity field as he gets closer and closer and closer to the edge of the event horizon. And then right at almost the climax of when the gauges would peak out and begin breaking, that's when you fire your photons. So much like we did with uh, Wadney earlier, I need you to roll me a control security difficulty of three. And I need the actual Valkyrie fighter to roll me a weapon security assist. And how many momentum did you get out of that? You got five. You're at five at the moment. Okay, I will spend one for a third dice okay and i will use my determination because risk is part of the game you want to sit in that chair and you said weapons security yep okay so it'd actually be a uh, two momentum because determination counts as the third die the ship and... did not help all right so either energy weapons or starship security systems i'll give you the latter All right, that is five, five successes, which means you get that two momentum right back. And yeah, uh, Kijwick, you pull it off masterfully. Um, the shockwave, almost like a um, reactive armor where you create a shockwave to blow apart a shockwave, you kind of do that same thing here where you ride the cushion of explosions just enough that you don't fall into the event horizon. And I'd like you to roll me, uh, Terrell, I'd like you to roll me You also get a threat. Eight. Ooh. I'd like you to roll me eight challenge die to see how well you do. And um, Captain, don't forget to roll your challenge die for your veteran. Yep. Rolling it now. Nice. Right. Nah, he doesn't get back. Only on an effect. Yeah. Oh, okay. Only on an effect. And I'll re-roll the three. All right. Because I've got momentum to spare right now. All right, so you, uh, you're you doing well. I mean, everything's checking out green. You feel like badasses. And then Aces High does something similar to you where instead of actually launching their own photons, what they do is they ride the wake of yours. So they are quite literally on your ass as you come through here. And because you gave me so much threat, I'm going to give them the full beans. All right, interesting. A complication. So what's going to happen is they're going to suffer some power loss as their shields buckle and uh, strain to catch up. But they get, uh, do they get two complications because that one threat die is a nineteen. That is a nineteen. So what I'm going to say is they momentarily lose power. Um, so they're technically in second right now. Um, so yeah, uh, Watney, what are the Endorians doing? Um, <clears throat> they're not going to be risking it for the biscuit, so okay. they're going to, um, stay nominally distant from the black hole. In that case, you have no increased complication range. Okay. Oh, well, uh, I think what's going to happen here is, uh, you're going to be a little bit better than the Cations. But not by much. Uh, you're going to sort of skirt around the entire black hole itself. But it definitely costs you some time. Time that the Klingons and the Cations could use to catch up. Okay. All right. So we enter in to... So let's see. They actually rolled one. So their difficulty has gone up. All right. Their difficulty went up. And you guys need to be at one as well. All right, so before the very last leg of the race, we're going to cut back to the team on the how because I believe Dottig has a revelation to share. You're muted. Yes. 
I, I didn't want Dag to be the only one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yes, I do. As a matter of fact, uh, Dateg is going to slap his com badge uh, and say, Dateg to Jana, please report to engineering. Uh, right away, Captain. And Jana would scurry off the bridge as fast as his legs could carry him. All right. You arrive in engineering. And I will, or Dateg will uh, approach Jana and say, it has projected a message to us. I've run it through the Universal Translator. It is both exciting and disconcerting. Uh, and he will show Jana the, um, the tricorder reading. The message simply says, emergency, the sole survivor of the supernova which wiped out the empire is about to expire. Vault integrity failing. Wait, does it provide any coordinates? It does. I just didn't put them in there. Okay. <laughs> Um, how long would it take us to reach them at the house maximum warp, or do we have quantum slipstream drive? Uh, you have QSD. Uh, if you use QSD, you could be there momentarily. Well, but it Captain... would mean leaving the race, is what I would say. Just remember, you are technically supposed to be monitoring the race. Mm -hmm. uh, well, Captain, it looks like this is uh, on you, but. <laughs> How could we, as Starfleet officers, let something like this go? Imagine what systems we might be able to recover from that facility. And this man or woman or whatnot's life depends on us. Isn't that right, Doctor? That's correct. This is now a distress call. And we are obligated to respond. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, would you like me to analyze the probe? I mean, I might be able to learn something about... I don't know, it's it's time of release, or there might be other coding or something like that. I, I could take it apart for you. Um, for now, let's just start with a metallurgical analysis. You see that he deflates and his tail just sort of hangs limp. Okay. Uh, Once we determine that uh, it is not in risk of exploding, feel free to disassemble it at your leisure. To be fair, there's always a risk of anything exploding. I mean, this is very complex technology. And I, I mean, I'm not saying that I have any concerns about this per se, but just, you know. I'm spending two threat that uh, Dotic's tricorder explodes. It just, they just keep doing this. You know what? I, I'll have an engineering team sent to sickbay. We'll, we'll run through the entire gamut of those things. Can you get me some Model 3s? I don't like these Model 4s. They explode. You know what? There's something to be said for that retro charm, like the how. You know, it's it's old, dependable technology. There, you, I, I understand where you're coming from. The how is a dump. But you don't talk about a lady that way. It's a ship. I don't know. Humans have this thing where they call other ships ladies. It's I'm a Tellerite. I, well, and I'm a Cation. I'm just we're there are all these humans around us. I'm trying to. You went to Starfleet Academy. They they yes. infect you. It's like a disease. You make a good point. I'll be on the bridge if you discover anything. Yes, sir. Um, all right, we go back to the race. I, I'm just going to throw it out there. I almost want to do a sitcom with these two. Let's just put them in a room. <laughs> they can talk to one another, and uh, we'll we'll syndicate it for 30 minutes. Oh, Lord. All right, so now becomes the... the Star um, Trek remake of The Odd Couple? I was thinking more like Seinfeld, but sure. Uh, let's say that this is the end gambit for the race. How fast you get through the Badlands will dictate how quickly you arrive back at Deep Space October and the finish line. Jaro. So, oh, go ahead. I was just going to start talking. I thought you were done. Go ahead. No, that, that I was just going to ask about Jaro, so go ahead. Jaro, how good are your reflexes in this? Yeah. I... He, he, like, tosses a pencil in the air and, like, misses it. Oh, yeah, sorry. Where did you get a pencil in space? <laughs> so, um, I'm gonna... I want you to take a look at these nav coordinates. I, I think you can do this. Uh, this is a course around all of the plasma streamers, and it uses three of the gravimetric disturbances as pull pushes to get you extra speed... Oh, like out, boost power-ups. I, I think you can do this. 
or we can just destroy the ship in a plasma stream, depending on you know how close you get. Hey, uh, hang on, and uh, he reroutes uh, all uh, basically everything he can to uh, engines. <laughs> Um, GM, at this point, can we say that a hail from the how comes into the Valkyrie? Yeah, yeah, I think this is a very good time for it to come in. This is Kiswick, not a good time. Well, I'm sorry, Captain, but it's about to get worse. We have to leave. What do you mean you have to leave? Well, not to put too fine a point on it, sir, but we believe that we've located the survivor from the Takan Empire and they have sent us a distress call in the form of a probe. It's all very complicated. I will explain when we get back. Dotting out. <laughs> so that's what that feels like. All right, <laughs> good. Uh, and then uh, Terrell uh, reroutes all comms to power of the engines too so initial dampeners <laughs> off communications off everything off all right yep. so here's how this is going to work you're going to be at a difficulty of four all right mm -hmm. the shuttle will assist you with engines con now that difficulty four is after accounting for both your reactor control <laughs> systems God. and your precision maneuvering so it was a difficulty of six just so you know all right so the good news, though, is that if you pass this, you are rolling another eight challenge die. All right. So that's uh, one threat, two momentum. Okay. And uh, hopefully hopefully, I can get a little something something from the, from the ship. And the applicable focus. Yes. Yeah. Blam! All right, that's three successes. I'll re-roll one of those. Okay. With bold con. What's the ship rolling? Engines con. Got it. Ooh. Come Ooh. on. All right, can the shuttle get you it? <laughs> oh, no, and you've already spent your determination. So I think what happens is can you guys... Can the captain do an assist with Astronav? I'll allow he was it. The one who plotted the course. I'll allow it. You may assist with a command and con, or that's sorry, a presence and con. Remember, it's only the one die, so this is very important. I'm about to challenge a value, so it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yes! Okay, there's your one success. So, as uh, you nearly fall into a um, a tailspin as you sort of skirt the edge of one of the plasma streamers, uh, Datik, maybe you shout something uh, and Terrell hearing it immediately course corrects and you guys manage to hold on to it. So, yeah, a challenge die for the marbles. What you I'll re-roll two of them. But that's a good roll. That is a very good roll. Oh, even better. <laughs> All right, so you, you are at 11 right now. So let me actually put these numbers on screen so I can track all of it. All right, so you're at an 11. Okay. All right, Watney, what are the Andorians doing? Um, it's just going to be old, reliable, and not do anything crazy. Um, all right. Uh, full speed ahead. Full speed ahead. You do have three momentum. This is the last leg of the race. Um, I actually don't know how accurate my momentum is. <laughs> so uh, I think it. I think it's accurate. Think you spent any. Yeah, you haven't spent any, so I think you're good. Okay. Um, then I'll spend a momentum. Okay. And again, macro will handle that for you. Hey, three successes, which uh, means you actually get four work. Very nice. Ooh. So, you know, that could be good. Let's uh, let's see how the Cation is doing. So the Cations, um, what I would say before you give us our lovely peek into the lives of Cations, um, they are at a difficulty of three because they had uh, obviously some problems with the black hole. 
Oh, Kitten, I, I got the most wonderful images for our Hollow novel collection. The, 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 the images that we're going to be able to show at our next family meeting, at, it's just family reunion is going to be just lovely. It, you're flying next to Black Hole, great shots, just lovely. Excellent work there. And I'll give you a threat just for uh, three dice. All righty. Also, I am rolling a kitten. Kitten is amazing. All right, uh, two successes. So you actually managed to get up ahead of the Andorians almost at the last moment. So you're at a six. And now Great. it's time for the Klingons. What are the Klingons got? They're singing Ya Ja Ke Ho. <laughs> Except it's more like Ya Ja. ja. I don't remember the words. <laughs> uh, and let's see. And and he'll just the uh, the captain who I have uh, I have named uh, Cord, son of Borch, um, is going to slam his fist down one final time and say. Well, if I can't win, I want some blood. And he's going to scan the sensor readout, and uh, he is going to... So... Technically, you can hit any of the other racers. You okay. have the technology to do so. There are you. All right. Um, he's going to try to ram the aces high again. And ram say, or... But this is very clear because ramming is going to be difficult. Yeah, okay. But if you were to fire phasers, oh, lock disruptors and fire. All right. Who? And, and another clean says, "Sir, what? What? What target?" It will be you if you are not. Sir, I, I can't shoot the disruptors at me. I'm in the ship. Oh. Kalis, give me the strength to endure just one more day of prattling. The worker bee. All right. So yeah, uh, go ahead and roll your uh, your macro there, and let's see what happens. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and give you three threat. Three threat. All righty. All right. It's a good thing you did. So what happens is as the worker bee sh struggles to. Uh, get its engines back running. The uh, where is the bathroom? Uh, lances out with a green bolt and hits the aces high in the back. However, collectively, you guys have given me a grand total of nine threat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend all of it such that the explosion of the aces high <laughs> it takes out the back half, meaning the warp engine that was installed. But it does so in a way that causes the Aces High to blast forward at near light speed. So you guys were already going like half, or what is it? I think it's it's half impulse, or no, full impulse is 0.3C, I think is how it works out. The Aces High is going like 0.8 or 0.9C. So there's going to be some time dilation, but they don't really care about that. So let's see how they do. All right, so to all outside observers, the Aces High vanishes. Um, so the Klingon uh, um, <laughs> cord will pull his hip disruptor and shoot the, um, shoot the Klingon at the weapons console and go, you missed! <laughs> and of course, because it's Klingons, I imagine he literally vaporizes on yeah. the spot. So <laughs> rip Klingon. But yeah, yeah. Uh, sort of in that dead heat uh, where the Valkyrie sort of pulls into the finish line. Almost, I'm going to flavor it that you maybe do one of those plasma trails again as you pull in and uh, the station Hatea calls and says, well done, Terrell, Captain. You guys are first. Yeah, uh, he uh, Terrell pulled in, or like whipped across the finish line, using all of the gained momentum and actually spun the ship so they went in backwards. Nice. Across the finish line. Nice, nice, nice. And then because I find it funny, I think what happens is seconds later, like literally milliseconds later, 
the remains of the Ace's High sort of appears next to you as it decelerates from near light. The and, remains? Uh, Ateus, <laughs> and, well done, uh, Ateus, Lieutenant. Uh, go ahead. Well done, Lieutenant. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That was that I, was some good uh good navigation in the in the mediocre lance. You have a fine ship. It's the paint job, I tell you. Makes it fast. Mm -hmm. Looks like a gormagander. Hey, that's what I was going for. And of course, uh, as the other entrants come across, uh, Hatea calls out. And uh, in third place, we have the lovely Cation couple. And then runner-up is uh, the Andorians. And, um, well, the Klingon seems to be doing donuts, so we're just going to pretend they're not in the race anymore. And uh, it is at that point, though, that Hatea sort of goes back from wide comms to directed comms and says, um... Sir, what are we doing for a reward? You you didn't tell me what we're what we're rewarding people. Just give him by a minute, Gil. It's give everybody else. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> All right, you're on mute tag. Just so you know. I'm just I'm laughing. Oh yeah, yeah. I just oh. wanted to make sure that you didn't start again. Uh, the reward was 150 bars of gold press latinum. And Hatea pauses and says, um, is that coming out of your account, sir? We, we, we only have like 90 on the station. Um, it's actually, it's, it's coming from a guy I know on DS9. Uh, you're not Quark? No, 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 no. His brother. Rom? Grand Negus now, Rom. Uh, very good, sir. I will send a, uh, congratulatory message. I don't think they'd like to be congratulated that they're losing money, but you should let them know their investments in the shuttle have paid off. I'll do that, sir. And then uh, we're going to transition back to the uh, other sort of away team here. So do we just combine all of our momentum at this point? Yeah, at this point, combine all your momentum. So I think, uh, I think you should be at four total by my count. Yeah, I need to take one away. I don't know how to do that. Uh, basically, you would click that momentum icon above your name, uh, then drag the cards onto the map. Or just let me steal them all. Or, you know, that too. There you go. <laughs> I need a tutorial on how to use momentum. Later. I will uh, make a handout for you. But yeah, uh, I think at this point, uh, Dotig's probably returned to the bridge. Uh, Stetko, you've gone back to your station. Uh, Jana, have you remained in main engineering, or...? Um, I think once I had run all the scans I could and I knew that we were approaching the coordinates, I would return. Okay. All right. So uh, when you approach the set of coordinates, uh, what you see on the view screen is almost like a hollowed-out asteroid. Um, you can see right through the middle of it, and what you see sort of on... Um, almost like Cerebros from X-Men or like Stellar Cartography where you have that long sort of bridge that goes to a circular point. You see one of those uh, bits of architecture inside the asteroid itself. And what you're assuming is the containment vessel, prison, whatever it might be, um, you sort of see bits of lightning arcing off of it uh, to strike the surrounding rock from this glowing prism in the middle of this bridge. Uh, so Statko's gonna ask to be filled in. Well, the probe that we recovered is a distress beacon from the Takan Empire. Apparently, the distress last... Sur beacon. Well... It uh, sent us a message that the last of the Takan race is here and their life support systems are failing. So we have come to rescue them. How well do you do with lightning? Personally? 
mm, professionally, preferably. Uh, lightning as an static discharge. Well, whatever's going on there. And speaking of, can somebody give me a sensor reading? Actually, sir, I, I think that you would be the most qualified to do that. But I mean, I'll do that if you want. I... <laughs> no, you're, you're right, you're right Lieutenant. If you want something right, you've got to do it yourself. I'll I'll do a sensor <laughs> reading on the, uh, on the construction. All right. Uh, go ahead and roll me a reason science uh, difficulty of two. And the how will assist you with a sensor science. Okay. Would my xenobiology, anthropology, or linguistics apply here? All of them actually would. Uh, I'm also going to spend one point of momentum for an extra die. That's all right okay. with everybody. That is uh, four successes, which means you get two momentum right back. There's something inside there. Mm. There's something living in there. But it's not a life form. Per se. Well, if it is a life form, it's not one you've ever seen before. It's... Too grandiose, too small. The readings are fluctuating all over the point. This doesn't make any sense. Readings are fluctuating wildly. It is... I believe it is life, although it may not be life in any form that we understand. Does it look like the um, situation is decaying? Yeah, I would say the lightning is getting more and more rapid as time goes on. Okay, so is this a situation where we go out to it, or that is that possible, or is you it? You could go out to it. I mean, the the asteroid hole itself is large enough that you could put should a ah, could fit the how through it, and you could go at it that way. But I would simply put the idea in Jonna's head: you might be able to beam it aboard. Yeah. Uh, Captain, uh, it might be possible to get a transporter lock, although I'm concerned that I don't even know what I'm locking on to. Uh, furthermore, I'm also concerned that is this thing going to be shooting off lightning when we bring it on board the ship? Your guess is as good as mine. You're the science officer, is there sir. We can tell what's causing the lightning and neutralize it during transport. There is a way. Yep. Uh, Stucco, why don't you roll me a insight and security difficulty of three? And if you pass, you don't have to worry about the lightning during transport. Nice. Can so I roll three and spend a momentum? You can mm -hmm. roll four if you want to. I'll roll four because I don't have a focus. Okay. Roll four if you want to. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, three successes is what you okay. need. So Stetco, yeah, you you know how to neutralize that lightning. Okay. Um, I should be able to uh, erect a containment field around the the subject when we beam it aboard and uh, neutralize the source of the lightning in the buffer. Well, excellent. Uh, please proceed, both of you. And uh, uh, excellent work. All right, uh, locking transporters. I'll, I'll get down to transporter room one, just to, I'll, I'll be right back. Uh, actually, transporter room one, could you just beam me down there, please? <laughs> they do so, no problem. My question is, okay. where are you beaming the occupant or the prison or whatever you're calling it at this point? What are you beaming where, to be specific? Sh uh, shall we say cargo uh, bay one? How bit, yeah, is it huge? Uh, no, it's like person size. So maybe seven or two meters uh, with a circumfer, a diameter of two meters. So it's a two by two by eight, if I have it right in my mind. Cargo bay would probably still be the best because then if, you know, worse comes to worse, we can depressurize the cargo bay and, and get it out if it's a catastrophic danger to the ship and we can't beam it off. Mm -hmm. Maybe, I don't know. All right, so I guess I would use the cargo transporters then to move it directly in there, given the size of the object. Okay. 
So what I'm going to say is uh, transport goes off without a hitch. As we move to Theater of the Mind for this one, because I don't have a uh, cargo bay map for the Howl. Well, um, Dante would want to be there, so he would... I mean, Statco can feel free to come along. Maybe we can leave a oh, an NPC and charge the bridge. Yeah. yeah. All right. So let's just say all three of you uh, actually go in to the cargo bay. And what you see is confusing. The prism that you beamed aboard isn't there. Instead, there's a mysterious old man wearing, you know, uh, anachronistic clothing. Uh, has sort of a scruffy white beard, tattered hat, tattered this clothes. Guy. And he he's kind of doing the uh, Arnold pose from Terminator. Where, um, you know, he kind of is doing the three-point pose, the hero pose, and he sort of just sort of slowly stands up, turns around and says, What year is it? 24 to 13. He sort of looks around at each of you. By our calendar. I don't know your species. Ooh, um, can I cross-reference the Starfleet library mm -hmm. with the Takan calendar mm -hmm. and attempt to extrapolate a sort of measurement of time that he could understand? Yeah. Uh, why don't you go ahead and roll me a control and a science uh, difficulty of four. It would be very difficult. Um, okay, well, I will... Let's go ahead and spend those two momentum, and Mike, you take one point of threat. Got it. Oh, unfortunately, not enough. Um, so you still spit out a date, I think, unless you have something else. Um, could I? I know I'm I'm doing this in reverse order, but could I use my mm -hmm. um, determination? You could. Uh, you would just. You would be limited to re-rolling. You wouldn't be able to add the sure. two successes. Yeah, no, that's fine. Um, so I will. Uh, I'll tap my value. Uh, there is no such thing as the unknown. Mm -hmm. And let's try to re-roll that. Uh, let's do control and science. All right, everybody. Wish me luck. One success. So you're able to come out with a uh, seemingly accurate number, like because there's no 100% way to be sure, but you give him a good number. And he says, I've been trapped for that long. Hmm. Well, I have a lot of catching up to do. And he doesn't disappear like a Q would. It's one of those things where maybe there's a collective moment where you three all blink in unison, and then the old man is no longer there. There is no trace of him having ever been there. It does the Batman mm -hmm. vanish? Is exactly. there, there a lack of consciousness that that Stetko would be able to like feel a cutoff with? Yes, it's very sudden where you were feeling confusion, maybe some annoyance, maybe some wonder from this individual. But it's it happens at the exact same time as that blink. So one moment he's there, one moment he's gone on all senses. Okay. Could I double check the internal sensor logs? So anything regarding the kinds of radiation that were produced, what happened to the object once it was beamed in, and mm -hmm. perhaps what species this was, if we can determine that? According to the computer, you never beamed anything aboard. Uh, I'm going to have to take another look at those cryonerol gel packs. Hmm. Um, Stucco will turn to her uh, crewmates and be like, don't worry, he was real. I felt him there. Well, that's reassuring. Uh, isn't it exactly the opposite? He completely wiped any record of his having been on the ship with his mind. That seems like the opposite of reassuring. Uh, I didn't detect any hostility from him. More like confusion and 
well, annoyance. Think of it this way, Lieutenant. If it had the power to do that, likely if it meant us harm, then we would have little recourse. So therefore, we must conclude that it meant us no harm. I, I, I don't think that logically checks out. I mean, it just means that he might want to like keep us around for some kind of horrible, nefarious purpose at some point in the future. But uh, well, I'm not the question you, Captain. There was literally, I'm telling you, there's no deception. <laughs> Plus, we have I'm an empath. A, Do you guys we, know this? <laughs> we have the word of an empath here. Hizwick to Hal. Dottig, you need an assist? Uh, I think... Uh, um, just so you know, um, Dottig, <clears throat> um, the captain can't hear it. But Jaro has altered the uh, communication, so it sounds like the captain, but with helium. Nice. Um, captain, I could ask you the same question. Are you feeling all right? I'm feeling fine. I just need to know if you need an assist. <laughs> Doctor? It's Jaro, yes. Jaro, take us to the how immediately. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes. <laughs> Yep. Okay. Well, Doctor Dottig, I'll see you when we get there. Kishwick out. Very good. Oh man. <laughs> I'm going to need to take a look at him when he comes aboard. I think I think it's all right. I, I this is not the first time I've encountered this kind of. Uh, <laughs> oh really? Well, please enlighten me, Mister C double minus D double plus basic Starfleet <laughs> field medicine. You know what, sir? If you want to run every medical test in the world on the captain, please be my guest. I'm sure that he will benefit from your expert abilities. Every medical test in the world. There are many worlds. Each have varied and valuable medical practices. I find your viewpoint to be narrow and outmoded. I find your equivocation to be frustrating. <laughs> And I think that's actually an amazing point to end the session as we sort of pull back with those two bickering. And uh, yeah, we sort of see the Valkyrie fighter zooming in to join up with the How. But yeah, that's where we're going to end the session. What did you guys think? Odd raising. I, I enjoyed uh, being <laughs> indulging my inner Klingon. I loved it. Yeah. I also like that Jonna knew exactly. Oh, I've heard that before. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Yeah, that was cool. good. I don't think I've ever played a, a session like with a race like that. So, yeah, I I sort of struggled for a little bit trying to figure out how to equate the race mechanics to something that would work in Star Trek. So I'm glad it mostly worked out. I mm -hmm. think you did a great job. It was really well done. It, it tried was it, it was um engaging on the part of us to to give us control of the the other ships and to let us you know make some rolls. Mm -hmm. um, but it wasn't so, you know, top heavy with, with mechanics that it sort of, you know, bogged anything down. It was very fluid and dynamic. I, I loved it. Mm -hmm. And I think from a world building perspective, it was a really cool way to introduce the elements around the station without, without it just being plain exposition or narrative. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, uh, yep. we're going to have to talk offline about this, but I want names for the Cation couple because they're amazing. George and um, Gracie. You're just saying that because I don't like Star Trek The Voyage film. Uh, oh. We're going to yeah, have to talk uh, about that. Well, one of them is saying kitten, <laughs> obviously. Yeah, one of them. Oh, my God. She just the never grew remark. out of it. That was so good. Oh, so my God. Good. But, yeah. All, the, uh, all that was needed was, like, a haughty English kitten, I say. Oh, God. <laughs> I might have literally died. I, I might have literally died. All right. Uh, in terms of next week's session, everybody good for the 15th? Yeah, mm -hmm. totally. Also, the and viewers today were absolutely awesome. Thank yeah, you. so Thanks another for shout out to the viewers. Thank you guys. Yeah, it, it really means a lot. And uh, I definitely will be taking 25% of everything that happened tonight and throwing it towards the kids as well. Yeah, so, you're, you're doing awesome with yeah. the extra life. Yeah, the, we have lots of generous people is what I would say, which, you know, every little bit, even if it's 50 cents, a dollar, whatever, every little bit matters. I mean, I think that's exactly the spirit of Star Trek, even though a lot of, you know, not all of it comes from your, your Star Trek streams, but I think for, mm. for our part, that's 100% the spirit of Star Trek. So well done, everybody. 
Yeah, well done. All right, well, stream, this is where I hit the button. So thank you so much for tuning in and live long and prosper. Bye, stream. <laughs>